In this video, I want to go over some basic things you need to know about baseboards if you're looking to purchase and install these in your home. So I'm going to go over things like different types of series loops you can use in your installation for the layout in your home, accessories you're going to absolutely need to purchase when you buy these, um, just some common questions that we get about baseboards, and just general information that you might need to know if you don't know it already. So I'm going to start off with some basic things and then as the video goes on, I'll get into more complex details. So the way this works is very simple. Hot water enters through this pipe and it heats up these aluminum plates right here. And that heat is dispersed out of this and up through this mechanism through convection heat. And most copper lines that come with baseboard are three quarter inch or half inch. And when you go to purchase baseboard, you'll be purchasing in uh, sections of two feet all the way up to 10 feet. So the average output for baseboard is 600 BTUs per foot. And that's assuming that you have an input temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is usually the average. So this is one foot of baseboard, so it has a 600 BTU output. And if you have two feet, that's 1200. And if you have 800, that's 4800 BTUs of output. So this gets confusing to people sometimes because when they see the technical specifications on our page, you'll see that eight foot um, of baseboard has a larger BTU output, but that's only because there's more baseboard. So you just have to know that these have the same BTU output per foot, which is 600. If you're looking to purchase the correct amount of baseboard in your home, it's really important to understand the heat loss in your home per foot. Heat loss is a measure of the total transfer of heat through the fabric of a building from inside to the outside, either from conduction convection, radiation, or any combination of these. So calculating heat loss in your home yourself is a pretty complex process to do, but if you want to do it yourself, you can look up other YouTube videos where people explain how to do it, or you can hire a technician in your area that has a lot of experience, and he or she will be able to estimate the heat loss in your home based on the size of your home, and they'll also compare it to other homes in your neighborhood or your, your city, and they'll be able to know what sort of system you need to install in order to properly heat your home based on the heat loss that they think you have. So if you size your home correctly and you install the perfect amount of baseboard, then your boiler will, will be working optimally. Because if you think about it, um, if you have too little baseboard, then your boiler is gonna have to work too hard. And if you have too much baseboard, then your boiler is also working too hard. So if you have the optimal amount of baseboard, then you're gonna actually save wear and tear on your boiler, which is just better for your entire system. So one of the absolute best things about baseboard is that it's pretty cheap to purchase. Uh, these can be as low as $7 per foot because the material used in this isn't crazy expensive or anything. But what people don't take into consideration is that you need to purchase a lot of accessories when installing this, as you can see in this picture. So you're gonna have to purchase left and right end caps separately, as well as corners and spacers and anything else you need to make your install complete. So installation is pretty simple. Once you have all your baseboard and you have your layout ready, you can just take the heating element out of the, the casing and run this along your wall and then just nail it in. So once that's all set, you can then put the heating elements back into all your baseboard and then you just solder them together. If you run into a doorway, drop the piping under the floors and when you reach the end, put an end cap onto the baseboard. Some baseboards have specifically designed support brackets to accommodate return tubing above the heating element using standard fittings. And if you prefer PEX for the supply line, then you'll simply need a shark bite fitting to connect the PEX to this copper heating element, and then you'll be good to go. And then you just connect all that to the manifold or your boiler. And I know I make it sound simple by just sitting here and saying it, but it's really not a complex process once you get into it. So now I want to go over a couple of series loop configurations for the baseboard setup. And you can choose from any one of these. Uh, I'd suggest pausing the screen if you're interested in studying the chart closer. And if you want to look into these more, you should Google the terms I'm about to go over so that you can understand them fully because I'm just going to go over them very briefly. So the first is the single zone series loop. It's the simplest, most economic system to install and a single circuit runs from the boiler to the first run of baseboard and continues from there to the next room and so on. The last baseboard unit in the series is connected to the return at the boiler. It keeps pipe, fittings, controls, and labor costs to a minimum, and you use separate loop zones for each zone. Next is the multiple zone setup. Each zone is a series loop controlled by its own room thermostat. In the zone valve arrangement, each zone has an electrically operated zone valve, and there is a single pump for the entire system. There's also a series loop multi-zone with individual pumps. 
In the zone pump arrangement, each zone is provided with a pump, a flow control valve, and a relay. There's also the split loop, which provides more even heat distribution and the option of separate zone control. They also divide it into two or more sections, each with its own circuit. Each circuit draws water of the same temperature from a central trunk line, and balancing valves should be installed in each circuit at return end just before entering the circulator. The last loop series I'll go over is one pipe with diverter T's, which permits individual room shutoff or thermostatic control. Each baseboard unit is connected to the main by a supply and return branch connection, usually with a shutoff valve and a diverter T. This offers a sophisticated system of room temperature control. The last couple things I want to add is that if you're installing this, you should absolutely have an air eliminator installed in your system to remove any unwanted air trapped in your piping. And that's simply because anything that is susceptible to rust in your system will rust if you have air bubbles in the system. And it gets back to the point that we were talking about before with saving your boiler. And another common question we get with these is people are asking if they could be painted. And they can absolutely be painted if you want to. You can use simple spray paint or anything else that covers this type of surface. And that's all we have for the video. If you have any more questions about baseboards, then ask them in the comments section. And if you like the video, press like and subscribe to the channel because I do a lot of in-depth um, analysis of different types of products and I'd love a subscription.